there are many weird things in Call of Duty games, and despite us analysing things like why a soldier refuses to use ammo attached to the side of his gun in part 2, there are many weird things still yet to be discussed, so strap yourselves in, subscribe and hit that wee bell icon if you haven't already to become part of the notification squad, and think to yourself, how do the militia factions in COD games get access to all those crazy killstreaks? I mean, we're talking about an African militia here being able to call in a United States Air Force B2 stealth bomber. That's insane. What's even more crazy is when you're calling in the kill streak, you hear the pilot, I guess, say, Yes, sir, I will bomb them. <laughs> so nonchalant. Let me just fire up the old $737 million aircraft I've got, and I'll be there in a jiffy. He says he's gonna execute a bombing run in his B2 like he's just starting up his car to go and get a pint of milk from the shops. Why is one bullet not enough to smash a window, yet one swing of a knife can smash it? Unless we're shooting BBs at the window, or a soldier has superhuman strength. I don't get it. Look, even three bullets won't smash it. I mean, come on. I've smashed windows with stones. Never mind three high caliber bullets. The knife still gets the job done though. Speaking of the knife, how does our soldier knife so quickly? I'm clearly carrying a Barrett 50 cal here with my two hands, but I whip out the knife and slash someone, put my knife away and have the gun back in my hands in a split second. Maybe there is something going on with our soldier's arms after all that we don't know about. Maybe they're roided up to fuck. Who knows, it's pretty weird anyway. Anyone who's ever threw a tomahawk in Black Ops has surely at some point pondered if the thing is made of rubber the way it acts like a fucking bouncy ball when it comes into contact with the ground or a wall. God knows how something so bouncy can implant itself into flesh and kill someone. Why are the buildings in COD games designed so weird? Like, are all the architects in this universe on acid when they come up with these designs? Like, this building on standoff, for example, has got a ladder bolted onto the side of it for whatever reason. The entire bottom floor is the kitchen, no living room or anything. Head upstairs to find what appears to be a bedroom. Well, it's a room with a bed in it, and also a couch, that's it. There's a door here which we can only hope is the door to a bathroom because that's also something people have noticed. There's barely any toilets in these buildings either. Heaven forbid our soldiers ever need to take a dump during these battles. Why does your soldier die one second into freefall after jumping off a building or a cliff? And before someone hits out with the, well, it is possible to die before hitting the ground, I'm not having it. These soldiers shout, Hua! before they're even close to freefall speed. <laughs> it's even worse with cliffs though because look, there's actually less than a second here before my soldier goes Hoot! and pops his clogs. I'll slow it down for you. What is going on here? It's not the only weird falling related phenomenon in this COD game in particular. Falling onto the roof of a car from a great height can cause it to spontaneously explode in a fireball. Why? You'd think a soldier had just morphed into a fucking meteor and crash landed into earth the way this works. And while we're on the subject of cars, can someone explain how shooting harmless parts of the vehicle, like the windows, causes the car to start billowing smoke, then a few more shots into the door causes it to set on fire and then explode? What the fuck are these cars made of and whose idea was it to put a fuel tank where the door handle should be? How come the attack dogs have specific colours depending on what team they're on? The friendlies have all agreed that we prefer our German Shepherds to have a wee bit of colour on them, get some brown in there, whereas all the enemy teams have decided their dogs have to be jet black all over. Fierce looking. I must have missed the meeting where these norms were established. Personally, I think it would have been a sight to behold to having loads of wee Highland Terriers enter the fight to distract the enemy, but oh well. From attack dogs to the attack helicopter, why, without fail, does the helicopter only bring with it about a minute's worth of fuel to the map before it has to fuck off? Furthermore, the rockets you see the helicopter shoot in my entire Call of Duty career, I've never seen anyone hit with these rockets, never mind killed. They're total arbitrary shots that end up impacting outside of the map most of the time. Maybe it's a good thing that the helicopter only hangs around for a minute or so, so it doesn't have the chance to do any damage to our own team. Why do these chickens not show up through the thermal scope? The only logical conclusion is that these chickens are cold-blooded chickens. Well, actually, Marley, cold-blooded animals would still show up on- Shut up, matey! How can you magically change the contents of a care package? There's ammo in this crate, but hold on, abracadabra and suddenly it's some rockets instead? Or the other way around, such as this example, but you get my point. It's ridiculous. Now, I'm trying not to get too in-depth about the perks because I would be here all day, but 
Martyrdom. How the fuck does your soldier manage to drop a live grenade instantly as they literally die? Did they have it up their arse the entire time and they shit it out as soon as their sphincter relaxes when they die? Answers on a postcard please. Don't think I'm quite done talking about the knife from earlier by the way. Let's all assume that equipment like a sentry gun costs millions of dollars to develop and then produce. You know, how many hours have been put into designing this thing so it can withstand all the elements of war, yet a simple swing of a knife can break it. <laughs> Hmm, think there's been a slight oversight in the development process, troops, to be honest. Also, yes, this is someone else's footage from years ago, since I couldn't find a sentry gun to knife myself. Link is in the description if you're desperate to see the full thing. Ever wondered why the soldiers are fighting in Nuketown? No, really, what's the... what? They're fighting in the middle of a desert? A nuclear bomb test site? What's in it for the Spetsnaz troops here? What purpose could they possibly have in a fake town about to be blown up with a nuke? What can they hope to achieve by winning this fight? Because surely even if they did defeat the Americans, the nuke would be detonated anyway? This one's really got to me in fact, I'll probably never look at Nuketown the same way again. I mean how did the Russians even get into a fucking top secret US... <sighs> Breathe Gary, it's... It's gonna be alright. How can a UAV tell us where the enemy is if they're inside a building, or better yet, underground? Unless these UAVs are more sophisticated than I think, then this is quite a weird aspect of the game. Why are we not able to use attachments that would clearly help us before completing challenges? Honestly, think about it. Clearly someone new to using a gun could be doing with a red dot sight to aim at targets, or a grip to help with the recoil, but we have to work our way up to those? It's like a pilot who's in training being given a Boeing 747 to practice flying on before they're allowed to fly a toy plane. How does an EMP not affect both teams? We've discussed how illogical it is to drop a nuclear bomb on the enemy when you and your teammates are also in the blast zone, but at least the nuclear bomb does actually kill everyone, whereas the EMP? That's a pure cop-out. Same with the MOAB actually, how does that not obliterate you and your teammates? It's very weird indeed. There's a similar thing going on with the Guardian and Black Ops 2. If someone can explain to me why me and my teammates aren't being cooked alive by this machine like the enemy is, it'd be very much appreciated. Just like any likes left on this video are much appreciated too. Let me know some more weird things in Call of Duty games that I haven't spoke about already in the comments, and I'll see if I can go into some pedantic detail on them in video number 4. Thanks to everyone who submitted weird things for this video, and don't forget if you have any other video ideas you'd like to see me do, let me know those as well. Have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!